undifferentiable functions occur very commonly in machine learning. Examples include the hinge loss that plays a critical role in the support vector machine classifier and the ReLU function that is very popular in deep learning. As we will study in future discussions, gradient-based optimization algorithms are some of the most popular and successful. But how can we apply such algorithms when working with such non-differentiable functions? Today, we will see a very cool extension to calculus that lets us differentiate non-differentiable functions as well. My wonderful friends, this is CS771, Introduction to Machine Learning, and let's get started. Although calculus is often thought of as the study of the derivatives of differentiable functions, it turns out that we can do calculus with non-differentiable functions as well. To understand this exotic version of calculus, we need to revisit convex functions. Recall that in a previous discussion, we saw that a function is convex if the region found out by filling up the space above the function curve is convex. Click on the link above to watch the discussion again. A simpler way of rewriting this definition tells us that a function is convex if it lies below all its chords. We saw a mathematical way of writing this requirement. A function is called non-convex if it violates this requirement at least in one case. Now it turns out that there are other ways to define a convex function as well, if that function happens to be differentiable. An alternate but equivalent definition states that convex functions are those functions that lie above all their tangents. If we take a convex function and draw its tangent at any point, the function curve will always lie above its tangent. For non-convex functions, the function curve dips below the tangent plane at some point as shown in the example on the right. To write this definition more mathematically, we note that the equation of the tangent of a function f at a point x0 is simply the affine function w transpose x plus b where w is the gradient of the function at x0 and b is this expression given here. The term affine function simply refers to functions of the form w transpose x plus b. Note that the tangent touches the function curve at x0 as the tangent indeed should. This gives us a mathematical definition of a differentiable convex function in terms of its derivatives. For every pair of points x and y, we must have f of y greater than f of x plus gradient of f transpose y minus x. That is, the function value at y must be greater than the value at y of the tangent at x. Now you must be wondering why are we talking about differentiable convex functions in a video about non-differentiable functions. Just wait a moment and you will see why. Let us consider a function that is non-differentiable but still convex. For example, the hinge loss and the ReLU activation function are non-differentiable but still convex. We just saw how gradients of a function give us tangents. The trick to creating a calculus of non-differentiable functions is to turn this definition on its head and use tangents or things that look like tangents to give us gradients instead. This brings us to the concepts of subgradients and subdifferentials. Consider a convex function f that may be non-differentiable. At any point x0, suppose there exists a vector g using which we define an affine function h of x as g transpose x minus x0 plus f of x0. The idea is that if h of x behaves like a tangent to f at x0, then we can treat g as a gradient to f at x0. Now, tangents to convex functions need to satisfy two properties. They must always lie below the function curve and they must touch the function curve at one point. Now the curves of f and h do touch at x0 since h of x0 is equal to f of x0 simply by construction. This means that if we also have f of x greater than h of x at all x, which means that the affine function h always lies below the function curve of f, then h will satisfy all the properties of a tangent at x0 and then we can treat g like a gradient. Formally, we say that g is a subgradient to f at x0. Note that the vector g depends on x0 since gradients of a function can change from point to point. The set of all subgradients of a function at a point x0 is called the subdifferential of that function at that point. 
Note that this means that a non-differentiable function can have more than one subgradient at a point. However, things are still nice because for differentiable convex functions, if we try to use this definition, we find that there is a unique subgradient at a point, namely just the gradient at that point. To appreciate this concept better, let's take this example of a convex function with a point of non-differentiability. At this point y, where the function is differentiable, we see that there is a unique tangent and hence a unique subgradient, namely the gradient itself. However, at a point of non-differentiability, let's say the point x here, we find that multiple, actually infinitely many tangents can be defined all of which lie below the function curve and touch it at that point. For each such tangent, we get a subgradient and the collection of all these subgradients is called the subdifferential. Finding the subgradients of a function can be tricky, but the process is made easier by certain handy rules of subdifferential calculus. Inspect these rules carefully and see how we have rules of subdifferential calculus just like we have rules of regular calculus. We have rules that tell us how to calculate the subdifferential if a function is scaled or if two functions are added or even the chain rule. Note that in case of subdifferential calculus, the functions being scaled or added may themselves be non differentiable. However, Keep in mind that whereas regular calculus works with gradients which are vectors, subdifferential calculus works with subdifferentials which are actually sets of vectors. So we need to get familiar with the notion of scaling a set or adding two sets together, etc. It turns out there is one rule in subdifferential calculus which is not present in regular calculus and you might not have studied it in your high school calculus textbooks. And that is the max rule. If we define a function h as the max of two functions f and g, where both f and g may be non-differentiable, then the subdifferential of h can be calculated at any point based on whether f has a larger value at that point or g has a larger value at that point or if both the functions have the same value at that point. The reason such a max rule does not exist in regular calculus is because functions of the form h are usually non-differentiable. It turns out that even the concept of stationary points carries forward to subdifferential calculus. Recall that in regular calculus, stationary points are points where the gradient is zero and stationary points are very helpful in finding local minima and local maxima of functions. In subdifferential calculus, a point is called a stationary point if the zero vector is a part of the subdifferential at that point, which means that the zero vector is a subgradient at that point. Note that a stationary point may have non-zero subgradients as well, but so long as the zero vector is a subgradient, that point is a stationary point. This definition is similarly helpful here in finding local maxima or local minima of non-differentiable functions. To practice the concepts that we have just learned, let us find the subdifferential of the hinge loss function. The trick here is to write the hinge loss as a max of two functions f and g where f is the function 1 minus x and g is the zero function that takes the value zero everywhere. The hinge loss function is differentiable everywhere except the point 1. So at points other than 1, the subdifferential has a single element since there is a unique derivative at that point. At x equal to 1, we can use the max rule to calculate the subdifferential of the function and we find that the interval minus 1 to 0 is the subdifferential, which means there are infinitely many subgradients at x equal to 1. We can then use the chain rule to get more useful derivatives as well. Suppose we now use the hinge loss in a classification setting and we want to find the subdifferential with respect to the model vector. Assume that we have hidden the bias term inside the model vector for sake of simplicity. Then applying the chain rule gives us the subdifferential of the hinge loss with respect to the model vector w at any point. To get confident with the concepts of subdifferential calculus, it would be very nice if you could solve some of these exercise problems. The first problem requires you to find a subgradient to the sum of two functions, each of which is a hinge loss term but on different data points. 
Note that to simplify the problem, we are just asking for a single subgradient at a given point, not the entire subdifferential. However, the next four problems require you to find the entire subdifferential of the function at every point. The aim of these exercise problems is to familiarize you with various types of non-differentiability that is encountered in machine learning tasks such as when using the L1 norm or the L2 norm. One of these exercises is a trick problem where the function is actually differentiable everywhere. Can you spot which one is it? In summary, today we saw that non-differentiable functions are very common in machine learning applications. Thankfully, concepts such as gradients can be extended to non-differentiable convex functions as well. Doing this extension requires us to closely study the relationship between gradients and tangents. And this study allowed us to develop a notion of subdifferential, where instead of a unique gradient at a point, we may have several of an infinite subgradients at a point. This extension turned out to be very elegant because for differentiable functions, if we use the definition of subgradients, we find that there's a unique subgradient at a point that is simply the gradient at that point. We also saw that there are rules of subdifferential calculus that ease the calculations for subdifferential at any given point, such as the scaling rule, the sum rule, the chain rule, and the max rule. So this is a good point to wrap up this discussion. From the next discussion onwards, we will start using the concepts we have learned so far to design solvers for the optimization problems we encounter in machine learning. Till then, stay amazing, and I will see you next time.